What's going on guys, it's Jake here, and this is gonna be episode 24 of What's In Your Portfolio. So this is a series I do on my channel where I take a look at subscriber submitted portfolios. So if you wanna enter in on this series, all you gotta do is pretty much take a screenshot of your portfolio and send it into me one way or another. And just so you know, there has been a ton of submissions. So if you are someone that has submitted, your portfolio is probably gonna be reviewed eventually, but there definitely has been a lot, and I pretty much go over two in each video. But other than that, getting into it, so the first first two portfolios I'll be looking at today, uh, the first one's going to be a $700 Robinhood portfolio, then the second one's going to be a $31,000 Robinhood portfolio. So significantly different in terms of size, but uh, not so much actually in terms of investing strategy. And after the video or during the video, definitely let me know in the comments section what you think about these two portfolios, and I'll share my opinions at the end as well. But other than that, getting into it, so I'm going to pull up both these portfolios, and the first portfolio should be up right about now, right here. This first First portfolio, if I go over to it, um, $722 to be exact when they sent it in to me. And their day, you know, up a little bit. Doesn't really mean much there. But anyways, the first stock in their portfolio is AT&T. One share of them, up about 5% there. I personally like AT&T a lot. I think they have a good dividend yield, good solid company. I mean, they're not going to offer a whole lot of growth or anything like that. But I think their yield is upwards to like 7% or something like that. It's a stock I personally own. After that is going to be BlackRock. So this uh, is actually down a whole lot when they bought into it at least so maybe perhaps they were trying to like um, get a good um, averaging down or maybe trying to just buy it at a good buying point and I'm not really sure about that one but um, I'd probably just invest in something else to be completely honest I think they were probably targeting it because it's six bucks so it's almost a penny stock and I don't know maybe they thought it was just at a good discount price after that is coke coca-cola um, I like coca-cola another one I own good solid dividend stock right here uh, after that it's going to be British American tobacco so they also have a really good dividend yield um, pretty solid stock in my opinion again pretty similar to American tobacco companies. Uh, I wonder if this person, oh, I guess they can't be. I was going to say, I wonder if this person's British or something or Canadian or something like that because they do own some stocks that might make me think that, but I don't know. Maybe they are Canadian. I'm not 100% sure if you could even use Robinhood app in Canada, but either way, um, after that is going to be Iron Mountain. This is a pretty solid stock as well. Good solid dividend yield here. It looks as if some of these stocks, they might have been using the dividend aristocrats maybe, or maybe even dividend kings. I think dividend aristocrats maybe to get some of these. I'm not too sure. But anyways, good solid one. After that's Wells Fargo. Again, another pretty solid financial stock in my opinion. I think at the time they bought this, they were maybe again trying to buy it at a good buy-in point. Not too sure though. After that is going to be Ford. So Ford, another pretty solid dividend yielding stock. I mean, they're an automobile manufacturer. So um, those stocks actually have been struggling quite a bit lately but um, still think Ford's pretty solid. Uh, after that is going to be GM. So pretty much the same deal as Ford. I really don't think it's like too, too much of a, um, I don't know what word I'm looking for here, but I don't think it's really too much better or worse to buy GM over Ford or vice versa. I think they're both pretty similar companies, obviously in the same exact industry, both have pretty similar yields as well. Uh, after that's going to be JP Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan, another pretty solid financial stock here. So as you can see, um, most of this portfolio is focused on pretty large financials or not financial stocks so pretty large companies in general after that is going to be slack so ticker symbol work so this is actually a new company this is a tech startup you might use slack for your business or at work or something like that um, i've definitely heard good things about them and heard a lot of like just positive reviews of them overall as a company but as an investment i would probably stay away for now at least um, after that is going to be a Canadian Railway. So this is kind of making me think maybe this guy's from Canada. I don't know. But uh, either way, Canadian Railway, another good solid dividend yielding stock. And then that is actually the last stock in his portfolio. So looking at his stock right here, he doesn't really hold a lot of risk. I mean, he has one share of Slack. Um, he has one of like, or a few of that uh, BlackRock investment company, and not that that's risky or anything like that. But overall, honestly, I really think his portfolio is pretty solid. I'm going to assume he's going to probably add more shares of these positions as his portfolio gets bigger, or maybe even add some more companies as well to diversify, diversify a little bit more. He doesn't own very many tech companies, which is kind of interesting. He only owns Slack, which is really the only tech type company besides AT&T, which is kind of interesting. So maybe he'll add more tech stocks, maybe he'll add more um, healthcare stocks, something like that, just to try to diversify a little bit there. 
Anyways, moving on to the next portfolio. So the next portfolio, as I said before, is almost actually $32,000 when he sent this in. But again, both these portfolios were sent quite some time ago. So uh, anyways, let's see, in the past month, he's up um, 3%, so doing pretty solid there. And then the first stock in his portfolio is going to be Lyft. So he owns five shares of them, but only takes about 1% of his portfolio, so really not taking on a whole lot of risk right there. Personally, would not invest in Lyft. If anything, I'd probably invest in Uber over Lyft if I was looking to get into that industry, but this one is so incredibly unpredictable and very, very new, so definitely one I would not invest in right now. After that is Kellogg, ticker symbol K. Um, Kellogg, pretty solid dividend yielding stock. Um, he owns a little bit more of them, a little bit more equity in them there, but overall pretty solid stock, nothing wrong with that. Um, after that is going to be Shop uh, Shopify. So again, this one I think is a little bit more risky. Uh, Shopify actually has had some pretty good growth, but he apparently didn't bite into them. Um, or he bought into them somewhat recently, it looks like at least, or maybe he was averaging down or averaging up, I'm not really sure. But anyways, this takes up a little bit more of his portfolio. And again, I don't think they're a bad stock to own or anything like that. I just think they're relatively new and they there's just honestly better choices out there, at least that's in my opinion. After that, uh, this one is one that actually it was unfamiliar with. Although it says home, this is not Home Depot. This is actually a similar company that sells furniture and stuff like that. And from looking at them, they're really almost a penny stock. He must, he's doing a pretty speculative play here in my opinion with them. They're down a ton. So it looks as if he's really trying to scoop them in at a good buy-in point there. So I actually didn't check what their price is right now. So maybe perhaps he's up on them. Maybe he's not, I'm not too sure. After that is going to be a pharmaceutical company, and this he only owns at less than 1% of his portfolio, so not very much at all. This one right here, I mean, average cost $8, so he's up a little bit on them. Again, this seems to be a relatively speculative play here, but it's not very much of his portfolio. After that is waste management. So this is a pretty solid blue chip stock, good solid dividend yield, good company overall, gonna give you some pretty, you know, solid growth over the years. After that's Amazon. So see, I would probably rather own more Amazon than a company like Shopify, just because I think they provide a bit better upside. But, you know, with his portfolio size, he could afford to do so too. Like, let's see, he's got, you know, 5,800 equity in them. Then if we go to Shopify over there, he's got another 3,000. So in my opinion, I'm not, you know, suggesting that anyone does that or even he does this, I would probably put all of that into a company like Amazon rather than Shopify if you're wanting to go that way. Maybe perhaps he's trying to diversify a little bit. I'm not too sure. After that's Disney, 5% um, of his portfolio on Disney. I like Disney a lot, he, you know, up a little bit on them. Disney really solid, Disney Plus came out. That's a huge industry they're going into and I think so far they're doing a really good job with that. And that's actually the last stock in his portfolio there, Disney. So going through his portfolio here, I mean, he owns a ton of Amazon, he owns a pretty decent amount of Shopify and also this home store, which I, just wouldn't want 20% of my portfolio in a company like that. But I don't know, maybe he really feels strongly about them. Maybe he thinks they're gonna go up a whole lot. So his portfolio definitely is a mix of a couple of speculative plays as well as some pretty decent companies in my opinion. So, you know, some of them in there like Kellogg and um, if I go further this portfolio, to the portfolio like Disney and um, Waste Management, uh, those are pretty solid. And even Amazon, it's probably more of a growth stock, but I think it's a pretty solid play as well. So anyways, that is his whole portfolio. Um, so definitely let me know in the comment section what you think of both of these portfolios. Um, I personally, I don't know which one I like more than the other one. I mean, both of them have a couple of stocks and are companies I probably wouldn't invest in, but I don't know. I mean, if I go over to the last portfolio right here, the 32,000 one, like Lyft, I probably wouldn't invest in Lyft, but again, it's only 1% of his portfolio. Um, Kellogg, I'd be okay investing in, but again, maybe perhaps there's some other ones out there. Shopify, I'd probably put about half of that, I would say, into Amazon and just put half of it into something else. This home store, I would just not invest in them at all. I'm not really too familiar with this company, but just from taking a quick look at them, they didn't seem too solid. I'd probably put that money into something else, like maybe perhaps, I don't know if home Home Depot's in the same type industry or Lowe's, but probably in more companies like that. And then this one, I mean, I don't know, maybe he was trying to target them for a specific reason. He's up there, they're a pharmaceutical company. Again, 
this he seems like he's going more risky but if he was going more of a long-term play i'd probably invest it in like abvi or pfizer or johnson and johnson companies like that waste management's fine um amazon i'm fine with that as well and then disney i'm also fine with that so overall i don't know his portfolio is okay then if i take a look back at the first one right here he has some pretty solid dividend yielding stocks as well then he throws in some like weird ones like slack here this is definitely more of a speculative play um i mean all these are looking good and solid so far i mean all of them are really pretty solid to be completely honest besides slack that's definitely a little bit more risky and as is this uh black rock one i think i would just invest in something else to be honest not that this is a bad investment i would just probably put my money somewhere else but other than that, guys, it's really it for this portfolio. So um, I'm not really sure which one I like better than the other. I think I honestly might like the first portfolio a little better than the second one. But I don't know. It's pretty close, to be completely honest. The second one's pretty good besides a couple of little speculative plays. But other than that, guys, it's really it for this video. So uh, definitely let me know in the comment section what you think of these two portfolios. Which one do you like better? And also, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit that like button. And if you are enjoying this series, definitely like let me know in the comment section as well. So far, it's had pretty good reviews. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.